Let's take a look at a little Christmas light from Asda. And this came as a set of six of these, cost about £5, the six of them. Each one runs off a 2032 cell, and this one's all corroded for some reason, which is odd for a 2032 cell. But the idea is you get them with the LEDs just basically. It's the little copper wire and resin blob LEDs, and they're basically just sticking straight out. And you fan them out, and uh, there's your little sort of spray of light. And it lasts a good couple of days before it gets too dim. I should turn that off, save the energy. They also come with this horrible UK compliance sticker on the side that you can just rip off and get rid of because nobody likes stickers on their products. The only people who like stickers are the enforcement agencies. Let's open this up and see why this is corroded. I can see the corrosion in the switch as well. I'm not aware of this getting wet in the time that I bought it. I would thought there'd have been water damage in the packet itself. So there's the 2032. There's a lot of corrosion in here. I don't see any moistness as if this has been leaking itself. And it would be odd for a 2032 to leak like that. They don't generally ooze on a regular basis. Uh, right, tell you what, let's open this up. Let's get the spudger into it and see if we can work out how this opens, unless it's glued together. It may be glued. No, it's not. It's pressed together with pins, by the look of it. Hopefully they've not glued one of them in, though. Oh, one of them has just snapped off. Okay. So no major sign of damage beyond that. So tell you what, let's modify this. Let's take the LEDs out of here. Uh, I shall mark this one as the positive, because it's the one with the side contact, and the negative is the end contact. And I'm thinking just for fun, it would be good to either keep it in its base and just add a USB cable. That would be quite a good idea, leaving it in the base. Or if this comes out easily, which it may not because it's just blobbed in with hot milk glue, it might be viable to actually just put it on the end of the USB cable, which would be quite nice. I should get the soldier iron on in anticipation of doing technical stuff. So I shall cut these wires. This is a time of year. Also, that people have problems with their Christmas lights, the little copper wire ones, because they don't realise that these are insulated with a layer of lacquer and they try twisting the wires together and, and they don't work when they've they're been eaten by a kitty cat or something like that. Well, let's try isopropyl alcohol on this. Isopropyl alcohol uh, instantly releases hot melt glue. So it might... Oh, there it goes. Just like that. Is it going to come out this direction, though? I don't think it is. No. So I might have to try and get it out. Oh, it's already come off. Well, there you go. That's the problem resolved. Okay. The direction of this has changed. Let's uh, add it onto the lead as a little cluster of LEDs sprayed out on the end of the lead. So the soldier iron is coming up to temperature. I shall go and grab some sleeving and components that we might need for this project. One moment, please. Okay, I think I've got everything I need. So I'm going to put a 100 ohm resistor in. And if we do the calculation, typically at low current, the voltage across those LEDs will be 2.5 volts. The USB supply is 5 volts. So it's going to be 2.5 dropped across the resistor, so 2.5 divided by, and I'm choosing 100 ohms, equals 25 milliamps divided by all these LEDs. Not sure how many there are. Let's count them. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, say 20. Okay, so that is going to be roughly just over a milliamp each. It's not going to be too bright, but that's fine. The lower the current, the better. So I'm going to cut one of these Lacquer insulated wires. Let's zoom down this. I'm going to cut it to about here. That's the positive one. And I'm going to flow some solder on and This should hopefully make the lacquer shrink back. I think it's the type that uh, is just done with heat. So let's um, see if this works or not. If, if I could line things up well, it would be better. Okay, I think that is... I think that has taken the solder and it's basically bared back. Excellent. So we'll stick that resistor on. 
Keep in mind this is the positive connection. So I'll crop one lead down. Pop it into the helping hand. Don't normally use the helping hands, but they are useful for things like resistors like this because they are very small and aligning those two thin wires together is sometimes a bit tricky. So let's um, put some solder onto that. Flow a bit more onto this. And then put the two together and reflow them. Dripping molten solder onto my hands in the process, possibly. Hold for a second to let it cool completely. That is fine. Okay. Now, I shall also crop this resistor other lead down like that. And to keep things separate, I'll crop this lead up. Actually, I'll keep it the same. Okie dokie. Here is the USB lead that we're going to sacrifice this plug off the end. Wasteful, yes, but don't really have use of that plug. And besides, you get these leads with absolutely everything these days. I'm going to try and strip it in this wire stripper. Is it going to go in this one? Nope. Is it going to go in this one? Is this? At one point, it's just going to rip all the insulation off all the wires. No, it's not done that. It's pretty good. Now, I'm going to strip these wires. Crop and strip. I don't know if the wire stripper will actually do such thin wires. Let's try it. There's no harm. It has stripped them. I wonder if they're copper or copper-coated aluminium. Guess copper, because they've skimped on the quantity quite significantly. So now I want to use bits of heat shrink. Is that twisting properly? It's not twisting very well, so this might be copper-coated aluminium. That would be dire in such a low-voltage application, like a USB charge cable. But then again, many of these leads are supplied with cheap crap. Yes, yeah, so that can sometimes happen. I'm assuming, and this is a rough assumption, that the pink is actually positive, but you never know. I should test that, shouldn't I, before I make a fool of myself. Because sometimes the Chinese products, the polarity is not as you might think. They just seem to randomly assign a colour without any logic. So I shall turn this round to the 20 volt setting and turn it on and I shall bring down a power bank to power this this fetching pink power bank and I'll plug this in and make sure the leads don't short together and if the polarity is right putting this one on here and this one here it should show roughly 5 volts without a negative it is showing 5 volts if the negative had appeared here it would have meant the polarity was wrong but the polarity is right well that's nice Let's put the meter out of the way. New test probes, incredibly sharp. I was thinking, oh, they're sharp, and I just poked my finger with one, and it went right in. Very, very sharp. Now, I also want to put a bit of sleeving across here, so let's get a bit of sleeving like this size. Do I have a pair of scissors? Scissors that don't close anymore because I used them with excessive force, and now they don't close anymore at all. That's fine, they still work in a relative way. I wish I had left these wires a bit longer because I do want to put a bit of sleeve over these. So I've got a thin bit of sleeve for the one that's not got the resistor. So let's thread that on. This is where the heat travels along the wire and the heat shrink shrivels up. But the other one, I shall... Cut it a bit longer to cover both the connections. And we'll slide that on. And tuck it up as far as we can go. Okie dokie. Now, let's put some fresh solder on these leads. Noting that this one is not stripped yet. And the way we strip these is just with heat. It doesn't work with all lacquers. Some of the lacquers do need uh, to be cleaned off with a breeze of uh, sandpaper and stuff like that. But some of them, like these ones, it just melts back, which is very convenient. Put a bit on the resistor as well. See if we can get a bit to stay on that. Okay, so the negative is going on to the non-resistor one. 
I could have twisted those wires together, I suppose, but I didn't. So put that there. And we'll flow them. Give it a second cool. Lack of patience is a, a, an issue with me. Sometimes I'll just immediately move the connection directly after I've soldered it and the wire will pop straight back off because it hadn't cooled properly yet. So let's uh, bring these wires up here and solder. Hopefully this is... Well, hopefully it's in focus. That's looking pretty good. And we'll get this bit of heat shrink. And we'll slide it down over that wire connection. And we'll get this bit of heat shrink, slide it down over the resistor. And we'll shrink them into position with a hot air gun. Set to 200 degrees Celsius. Yes, it is. The hot air gun's very handy. But if you don't have one, you can use a lighter. Just be careful not to apply too much heat to this um, lacquered wire or the insulation comes off it. This is looking good so far. Excellent. Now, hopefully, this end, the little bit of heat shrink that I've got down here, will cover this. Technically speaking, I could have smooshed that all up into there a little bit and made it smaller, couldn't I? But I didn't. So let's shrink that down. And then, I shall, I mean, technically speaking, I could have plugged in test already. This will take a bit longer because A, it's a very cold room at the moment. You can stick the thing up the end and it works quite well because the heat goes right up the inside of the heat shrink. Mm, it's taking longer. I think it's 10 degrees Celsius. But it doesn't feel it. It feels quite warm for me. It's blowing an absolute storm outside though. It's great. That's one of the joys of living on an island in the middle of the Irish Sea is the hideous storms. Now, is this going to work? Yes, it is. So now, the heat shrink's still a bit hot. So what I'll do is I'll let this cool so it uh, can get solid. And then I'll fan these out and show you what the end result looks like. One moment, please. And here we go. So the current is... 23, 24 milliamps. So I was aiming roughly 25 milliamps. That's pretty good. And it's a very low load. It's just, it's not excessively bright, which is good. And uh, if I just uh, get this out of the way and I plug this in, I'll turn the, I didn't need to unplug that, but I did. Uh, I shall turn the light off and you can see what this looks like. So I'll take the exposure off like this. Turn it off like that. Oh, that's quite bright. That is quite visually quite appealing. That'd be a nice little sort of like ambient splatter of light in a corner. Um, I did notice with another one of these. Was it this one? No, it wasn't. It wasn't this one. But um, So this is the one with the batch in it, but it is slightly brighter than this one. It's not that much brighter, but this one will just last forever in a USB power supply. Uh, but I did notice one of the other ones that the battery went down quite quickly because it had a duff LED and it was shunting out and flickering. That's not such an issue when you've got the USB power supply to power this. So that's very simple. It's just basically a 100 ohm resistor in series with a parallel string of uh, about 20-ish LEDs. But that's it. I would call that a good result. That is a very nice optical effect. It's just this little random Sputnik that you can just chuck into a corner and have illuminated just for a little ambient illumination. Very nice. Looks good.